Okay. So we uh, wanted to offer this to give you more details on the workshops, but also the reasons for the workshops. So I'm going to let John lead off this discussion. You are. Okay. You're going to be pressing the buttons. I'll press the buttons. Okay. You press the buttons. Okay. Let's press the first button. Then we're going to talk about essential skills for today's developers, basically. Freeform RPG, which is what we've just been covering, it's just the beginning. And if you're going to be writing applications for today, you're going to require more skills. Uh, there are modern RPG practices, including uh, new ways of data definition, uh, using sub procedures and service programs and things like this, that maybe you don't have those skills in house yet. Um, the database is becoming more and more and more important. You may have noticed in recent announcements from IBM, every time there is an announcement, there are a host of new SQL services that replace the old, rather clumsy APIs that we used to have to use to find information. Uh, we've got ever more powerful IDEs now. Um, Susan and I have, have been using RDI, for example, since before it was RDI. It was Code 400 and then WDSC. Uh, I also use uh, VS Code with the Code for I plugin. And these are very powerful tools. And frankly, they make me one heck of a lot more productive than I ever was with SEU. So that's a skill you need to have. Um, open source. Now, why do we care about open source? We care about open source, A, because IBM do. Uh, and if they think it's important enough to spend the amount of money on it that they have, then we ought to be paying attention. But we'll talk about some of the more detailed reasons when we get to that bit. But the idea here is that these Summit Deep Dive workshops can help you get the skills you need to get started down this road. So let's start with modern RPG practices. Well, free forms the foundation. If you don't have that, then you really can't exploit uh, the majority or a, a very large percentage of the new RPG features. You need to move towards an API-oriented architecture. That is to say that your code be callable from anywhere by anybody. So the days when a customer wanted to communicate with you by, and would do so by phoning you or in the super advanced technologies would send you a CSV file. I'm sorry, that's just ancient history. Now they need to be able to call you. They want a web service that they can call to get the information that they need. And procedures and service programs are essential components in this. You need to upgrade your data handling skills too. I, I mentioned earlier about this, but Defining and using dynamic arrays, data structure arrays, templates, et cetera, to handle JSON and XML and other data types within your RPG, you're going to need this kind of stuff. And because RPG arrays in particular was so, well, to be polite, primitive for so many years, most of us never really got our heads around using them properly. And I'll, I'll talk more about this when I talk about open source stuff in a minute. If, but, you, if you think you know data structures and arrays, but haven't really dive, yeah. dived into what's happened in the last two or three years, you don't know yeah. data structures and arrays. And well, actually, I, I mean, I'd go further back than that. I mean, there, there's a lot of stuff happened in five, the last five years, mm. 10 years even, that a lot of people don't know about. And I think a lot of it is just because we came to ignore arrays. We right. just, there were just some, you know, we use work files. We didn't use yeah. arrays in RPG because- That's why we did it. Yeah. Because arrays were so useless, basically. Yeah. Um, you also need to get into using the power of SQL. There's too many old programs laying around there where there has, uh, a, you know, set LL, read, chain, loops to retrieve what are basically sets of data. And embedded SQL utilizing views, et cetera, is, is so much better for that kind of thing, so much more powerful. So what are the workshops related to this? Well, I've got one on data structure <laughs> some arrays. Imagine that. Imagine that. Um, so we'll talk all about the dynamic arrays and all of the new stuff that's been added in recent years. Susan here is going to do her uh, procedures and service programs by example. And the ex by example is the critical bit there because she literally takes you step by step 
through the process of building your first procedures and then your first service programs and how to maintain them, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Paul and I are doing API enablement with web services, so how to build them and consume them. And then uh, for embedded SQL, Paul is doing uh, the A to Z of embedded SQL in RPG. So he'll be going all over all the, the refinements, if you like, of how to embed SQL, what the limitations are, how to best do it, et cetera. And Paul will also be doing as uh, one on coding a modern RPG application. Um, we find it's often a good idea if you are thinking about doing new stuff or, or rebuilding an app from scratch, you need to know the modern thinking on how to build an RPG application. So this one isn't oriented towards, okay, let's take my existing monolith and modern, modernize it a bit. This one is how should you have built it in the first place, and therefore how can you build new apps, and how can you take and rebuild an app, and what should you be aiming at? And then, of course, there's database. Um, our uh, resident database expert, of course, is, is Paul Tui on the team, <clears throat> and so Paul will be uh, talking a lot more. I'm sure you've all heard about Paul doing his thing with the SQL language, essential language skills for SQL, is just to know the language itself, obviously, that's, that's the base. But then of course, utilizing it within programs, as John's already mentioned, Paul's gonna be doing an, one specifically on embedding SQL in RPG programs. The other thing is that a lot of people don't realize that a modern database is more than just about tables um, and, and columns. It's about constraints and indices and views, lots and lots of views. Uh, you, Paul is a big views fan and you'll hear a lot about views and how important they are in some of the workshops that he does. He also has workshops to talk about migrating definitions from DDS to DDL and how you can do um, sort of a, 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 do it in such a way so that your existing programs don't have to completely be rewritten or, or modified. And you also need to think about including some logic. We talked about logic, having your RPG logic callable from anywhere. Well, anywhere might include SQL because there is an SQL call statement that can call logic. Now that logic might be written in SQL procedure language and we can, you can learn that, that's a good skill to learn, but they also can be written in RPG. So you could actually, one way to call an RPG program is from an SQL statement. And so our workshops that we have that I shouldn't say we have, Paul has, uh, in this particular category or all Paul's sessions. Because he won't let us talk about SQL. Uh, well, I he, wouldn't want to, I tell you, he, he does, does a better job. Doesn't want to risk it. Um, getting to a modern database. Uh, that's the one that talks about uh, the DDS to DDL kinds of things and DDL itself. Um, <clears throat> foundations in SQL, that's if you want to learn the actual SQL language itself and some of the details and all the whys and wherefores and. Uh, I could probably use a lot of that myself, to be honest, because I know a lot about, I don't know about that much of SQL, and there's well, that much to know. Um, <clears throat> embedded SQL specifically, putting it inside your RPG programs, and SQL procedures, functions, and triggers, and how those work, and how they can be used, and want to use them. Why put that logic into the database rather than rely on RPG programs directly for all of that kind of stuff. One of my other favorite topics uh, in the world is uh, about IDEs. So our development environments that we work in. Green screens are just totally inadequate for editing this modern code. SEUS have been open, uh, updated in 15 years. New developer recruits are going to expect something a little different, uh, something a lot different from uh, SEU green screens. Luckily, we have not just one, but multiple excellent alternatives for uh, that are perfectly customized for IBMI. And specifically the ones that are most popular are RDI and code for IBMI using Microsoft's VS Code and the code for IBMI uh, extension for that. So I'll be talking about RDI. These are both beginner workshops. I wanna point that out. So, you know, if, you, if you've been using RDI for decades and you wanna know some little nitpicky detail about something, this may not be the workshop for you. 
Um, but uh, you might pick up a few things, but just keep in mind it is basic. Uh, both of these are actually basic. So yep. getting started with RDI, if assuming this is targeted toward people who are primarily green screen um, users. And similarly, those people that are um, green screen users or perhaps RDI users that may be frustrated are <laughs> RDI users. <laughs> Uh, in some cases, uh, the one about code for IBMI, is it right for you? So uh, those are two half-day workshops uh, available that uh, John and myself and are going to be doing. Okay. And uh, last but not least, by any stretch of the imagine, open source. Um, my, my number one point here is that everyone should learn a new language if you only know rpg and cl and maybe you've done some sql learn a new one learn something else learn node.js learn python learn php even if there's no obvious immediate need apart from anything else it's going to teach you to write better rpg code um, i mentioned earlier about arrays in rpg i completely rethought my usage of arrays in RPG after I started coding in PHP. Uh, it also made it far more obvious to me why I should write in procedures, why I should break my logic down into smaller and smaller pieces. It became much more obvious. The other thing about this is that you can do so and you can do this on your home PC or on your work PC. You don't have to you know, obviously IBM have spent a lot of money enabling this to work on the IBM I, but you don't have to have it running on the IBM I in order to use it. And in fact, with the new ODBC drivers, you don't even have to have uh, it on IBM I at all. You can still write um, Node or Python or whatever code and access the IBM I database on the back end. There's a number of different ways in which you can help use these tools you can help you to modernize your IBM i apps um, for example if you want to get more deeply into browser type technology if you want to do more web services and things like this there's a lot of tooling out there that can help you that's based around these open source languages also new programmers um, one of the big things we get from a, a lot of clients is I'm having trouble recruiting new programmers. And what they really mean is I'm having trouble recruiting RPG programmers. And what we keep telling them is then switch to freeform RPG and just recruit programmers. Those new people will help address your skill shortages because they'll learn RPG in freeform very, very quickly. And they can help with the skill shortage. They'll also help you with modernizing your applications because they have skill sets in the areas that, that you may well be lacking within your existing RPG and CL universe. You can also use open source packages to fill gaps in your software inventory. Um, for example, we had no end of problems trying to use IBM's SMTP server to send out emails. So in actual fact, the emails that you received when you registered for this seminar did not come from the normal IBM SMTP. Rather, they were from an open source PHP package because that interface is much better and more simply with Amazon than uh, with Amazon, with Gmail uh, servers than trying to do it with the SMTP setup. So we've also used other open source packages for other purposes. So there's a lot of ways you can fill gaps in your software inventory just by adopting these new languages. Uh, the relevant workshops, all of these are led by our friend Mikey Pavlak. And uh, Mike will be doing an intro to open source. That is to say, he'll be talking about why it's important, where IBM have invested, how you get hold of the stuff, how you install it, etc. Because IBM do now supply install processes for all of this stuff, and it is a much, much simpler uh, way of dealing with it than it used to be. He'll also talk a lot about terminology because that's, oh, that's yes. where I fall down a lot. Is I, they provide all, IBM provides a lot of documentation, but using words that I don't understand um, as a traditional RPG IBM I person. Yeah. So, uh, in addition, for, because Python and PHP 
have so far proven the biggest uh, open source languages that have been adopted on IBM I. Uh, PHP has been around longer, but our Python is gaining rapidly in popularity. And it might interest you to know that one of the reasons for that is that Python is very frequently used for scripting processes uh, in a much more powerful and easier way than you can do with PHP, with PHP, with CL. <laughs> I'll get my English right eventually. So Python is a great uh, language to use as well. So we hope that you'll join us. Those who know that many of you are already signed up for the deep dive workshops, but if you're not, a little more detail about the workshops themselves. Um, we're designed this to enhance your skills quickly. So we've talked about the skills that we feel are essential for today's RPG developers. Half day workshops um, on each of these topics, interactive live instructions. So we're actually gonna be there. We'll be able to uh, answer your questions uh, live. Well, hopefully answer them all, uh, but certainly listen to all your questions. Uh, live and in person, but it, they are also recorded. So for those people who, you know, something came up and you just couldn't make it or your time zone does, isn't suitable for uh, for watching the, uh, the live class, you can always uh, look at the recording as well. So it's easy to schedule every other work that you're doing. As you've seen with my, I think you already saw an example in uh, uh, some of my freeform um, code, uh, freeform presentations, a lot of code examples. We're big on code examples of all this stuff. So that's the kind of thing you'll have. Uh, there's quantity and group discounts. So it applies to the total number of workshops at, in, attended by an individual or group within a company. So whether it's um, say 10 people, each attending one workshop, you'll get the, the six person or greater discount. Or if it's one person attending 10, uh, workshops, you'll get the same discount. So that works either way. And our super cyber rates are still available until July 31st. Okay, well, with that, we're going to uh, wrap up the recorded portion of this. Uh, we will shut off the recording at this time, <laughs> but Susan and I will be here and keep the session running for a couple of minutes, in part because we've seen that there are some additional questions that have shown up. And so uh, we'll take a quick look at those and uh, get some answers into the system before we close this down. Thanks all for joining us from me and from me. Me. <laughs> oh, okay. From Canada. Yes. Oh, Canada. Anyway, okay. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today, guys. Bye now. Bye.